the real essence of uh, to think like an astronaut is to how can you take those lessons that astronauts have either learned or had to develop on their own in order to be successful and apply them to everyday life? How can you avoid fear dictating your life? How can you deal with the normal ups and downs of life and still feel successful? And how can you move your life towards a long distance dream but really enjoy each step of the journey along the way? And uh, if you can succeed in those things, uh, you'll not only have thought like an astronaut but you uh, might even fly in a spaceship someday. I had a chance to fly in space three times. Uh, once to go help build the Russian space station, once to uh, go help build the International Space Station, and then to go live there. It's a cornucopia of experiences, half a year, um, a myriad of, uh, of different physical and mental uh, stimuli and, and experiences. But there are certain facets of it that are very different than being on Earth. And probably the two biggest are weightlessness, and seeing the world in a new perspective. Those are the two big changes. So if you want uh, regular folks to be able to experience those too, there are different ways. I think seeing the world is easier to do just through enhanced imagery for uh, letting people just on their regular iPhones or whatever get regular imagery from the space station. They start to maybe change their perspective from looking around with their eyes to actually seeing the world from the space station just through the pervasive nature of the distribution of the imagery. And that step is possible and that one we're working on really hard. To get people to feel weightless is much more complicated. Uh, the best simulation really on Earth is probably underwater and prolonged scuba diving and, and working around something in a scuba environment. There are airplanes you can ride in that, uh, that will push over and for the brief period that there's pushing over you can float in the back, but that's a pretty expensive and esoteric experience. So I think if people really try to want to get the basic primitive flavor of what life is like uh, on board a space station, take advantage of the imagery, watch all the things, the videos and the stills coming down from the station. And the next time you're in a, uh, a warm swimming pool or on vacation somewhere where the water's warm, let out half your breath, let yourself float weightless in the water and picture if you could have that sense of suspended sort of existence for half a year. And maybe that would satisfy the initial taste. Uh, the worst thing that happened to me while I was on board the space station was uh, personal. One of the crew members, uh, his mom died. His, she was old and she was, um, had been ill for a long time. But uh, it, it's not a mechanical thing or a technical thing that, that constitutes the worst of experiences. It's always a personal thing or a, a human thing. And for us as a crew, and specifically for that person as a, as a human, to have to deal with the irrevocable loss of his mother, the recognition that he couldn't be there to grieve with his family, had to do it remotely, and that he would never see his mother again, of course, was, uh, was very hard for him and something that as a crew we all had to deal with. And it's a good lesson for anybody working far away, especially for crews that are going to be leaving Earth in the future and, and having no way to come back is to make sure that you recognize this as something that is bound to happen and try and make sure that uh, you've left your life in order but also that you've you've said the appropriate goodbyes just in case. One of the great joys in life is to meet other people who are enthusiastic and expert. Uh, enthusiastic just because enthusiasm is a contagious thing and and uh, it's hard to stay blasé about something when the people around you are excited and driven and focused. And to run into expertise is, uh, is so great because you can't help but learn. And to come to the University of Leicester, you run into the enthusiasm and the expertise constantly, uh, specifically in the areas where I've demonstrated interest most of my life, in, in uh, exploring the unknown that surrounds the world, up into the atmosphere, uh, beyond the atmosphere, looking at what lies, how craters uh, develop and the history of different planets, but then using the high ground of space to look back at the Earth and better understand our own planet. And uh, to be able to find a hotbed of, uh, of both research but also expertise and enthusiasm is great. University of Leicester is a really good example of both.